before I start my art, especially before I paint, I need to write my name in center letter. It should be on the back and it should be written with pencil. This is palette paper. This is shiny paper, paper that I mix color on. Red, yellow, and blue are called primary colors and they make all the other colors in the color wheel. Red and yellow make orange. Yellow and blue make green. See how the color in between is what the two primaries make? Red and blue are next to each other and in between there's violet and that's what it makes. But I also have cyan and magenta because cyan, magenta, and yellow also make all the other colors in the rainbow. They're just different versions of red and blue. Cyan, magenta, and yellow are what colored printers use to print pictures. This is a spoon. This is not a brush, so I'm not using this to make my artwork. The spoon is just for scooping paint out. I put them next to each other because I'm going to mix them together. Just the size of a dime is all you need. Too much and it's a waste of paint. Too little and you'll have to mix more. My brush is like a ballerina. These are its tippy toes and it dances along on the palette and on my paper. If I am mixing color, it's twirling my ballerina in a circle like this to mix my color. I do not mix my color like this. If I'm dragging the feet of my ballerina or I'm spreading the paint across my palette, it's going to dry way too fast and then I won't have any color to actually paint with. My brush goes in the water when I'm not using it. Different brushes make different kind of lines. That flat brush makes a nice wide line and this round brush will make a nice skinny line. If my paint starts to drag like it was right there, I don't have enough paint on my brush or I can just get my brush a little bit wet and it helps move the paint. To rinse my brush, I should always have my best friend the paper towel, swirl it on the bottom. I'm actually rubbing it along the bottom of the water container and then I swipe it on the edge and then test it on my paper towel and it's clean. I can take a clean brush and just dip it in the colors here too if, if I don't want to mix color. My brush stays in the water when I'm done painting and when it's clean up time and Mrs. Schnauzer will move the water. My job is to put the lid on the paint. My job is to take my painting to the drying mat and recycle any used paper towels. I fold my palette in half and I recycle it. Most good paintings start with great drawings, but I'm painting pattern today and I'm just testing my paint. So I don't need to make a drawing, but I recommend drawing your idea with pencil on a studio day. These are called temper cakes because they're in these little dried temper blocks. There's a clear lid that I put back on when I clean up. So I'm gonna leave it nearby. I'm always holding my paper towel in my hand while I paint because I use it a lot. To make this paint work, you gotta wake it up. So I take my water and I brush it on the paint like this. And you can see there's a good amount of paint in my brush itself. It should look bright and solid. If you don't wake up the paint enough or you add way too much water, you're gonna get not so solid. So again, you should load your brush up with the paint and it should look nice and bright and solid. If I need to clean off a paint, I just make sure my brush is clean first. So I rub it on the bottom. I should feel the bumps at the bottom of my water container. Swipe it on the edge, test it on your paper towel. It's clean. So I take some water and I wake up that paint. The dirty stuff gets starts to get wet again. And I take my paper towel and I just tap it clean like that. You can fold your paper towel if it's got a lot of paint on it and you can still use it for now. Temper cakes are great because they dry really, really fast and they dry fast on your paper too, um, but they're not as thick as liquid tempera. It shouldn't look like watercolor, so you're just adding too much water if it does look too runny. You can also mix color on your, on your temper cakes, taking a little blue, mixing it on here, and I just made purple. But when you're done, please be responsible for the next person. Get it wet, wake that paint up, and clean it off. When it's time to clean up with temper cakes, easy enough. You just put the lid on and put this back. Brushes in your water, recycle your paper towels, and your painting should go on the drying mat. Keep it flat in case any of the paint drips. 
Before I start my art, I need to write my code on the back. My name and my center letter. Flip it over. I highly recommend with watercolor paints, you draw your design and idea out first on a studio day. If you plan on just filling an area with color, that's the only time I wouldn't draw. These are called pan watercolors. Most of you have seen this kind of pan watercolor before and you only get a few choices. So here in the art room, we have a lot more warm colors and cool colors colors to choose from. The watercolor paint brushes are with the watercolor paints and they're different. They're meant to be soft to hold a lot of water. If I need to do a small detailed area later on, I can use a regular colored handle paintbrush. But for now, to fill my areas, I'm going to use the watercolor brush. The first technique I'm going to show you is called wet on wet. So I have my wet brush. I need my paint to be wet. Just like with temper cakes, you gotta wake up the paint so that it looks liquidy and a pool of that color. So I got a, a pool of blue. It looks like I could dive right in. Notice how every time in between when I was waking up the color, I was rubbing it on the bottom to make sure that it was clean. And you can always check on your best friend that paper towel while you're painting to make sure it's clean. So now I have the colors I wanna use wet already and I'm gonna get my area wet that I wanna paint in. It's helpful if you have a drawing first so you know where you're painting an area. Let's pretend I was doing a landscape and this was my sunset, this was my ground. I'm going to get my paper a little bit wet first, not a ton. I'm just getting it shiny in just the area where I'm adding my paint. You can see it's shiny there on the top. And with watercolor, you gotta work pretty fast. So I want my colors to blend together. I'm loading my brush here, so I'm swirling it in the wet paint and I'm putting it where I want. And you can see it's starting to mix and spread on its own. That's the beauty with watercolor. Swirl it on the bottom, swipe it on the edge. It's clean, next color. Loading my brush by twirling it. And I don't want to overpaint an area. I want to let that watercolor do its thing on its own. And I can just gently touch my areas. I can tilt my paper and let it run. If I get an area that looks buckled or wavy and there's a big puddle I don't want, I can take my paper towel and let it drink up a little bit of that puddle. But I definitely would not be laying my paper towel flat down on it or else I'm gonna take off all that color. With watercolor wet on wet, you really need to make sure your paper's all the way flat while it's drying. So I'm gently picking up some of the color. If I do this, you can see I'm just taking off a lot of color and I don't wanna do that. I need to make sure my area is dry before I add any more watercolor to it or else it'll start spreading down like you see right here. So I'm getting my area wet just where I want my color to spread. When you put one wet color next to another wet color, they mix on their own. You can overlap a little bit. And anytime you see a puddle, just let your paper towel drink a little up. I can even just take water and paint a little bit of water underneath my wet color and it spreads more. Another thing I can do is called dry brush. And that's when I keep my paper dry, um, you get nice, clean lines with that. If you don't want your color to mix, let it dry all the way before you put another color next to it. But this is dry that I did earlier today. I can take paint and paint right on top and you can see the color through. So it's a really neat way to create layers of different colors. To clean up my watercolors before I put them back at the paint center, I'm just gonna do this. I'm letting that extra water soak up as long as it's safe enough for you to be able to carry without dripping everywhere. I need to wipe down my table. My brushes go in the water, leave the water alone. 